It's the second day of the Chessable Masters semifinals, and Magnus Carlsen's play has been smooth like butter. And in this game, which I'm about to show you, he needed to win with the black pieces to knock out Ding Li Ren and make it to the finals. Let's see what happened. We get c4 from Ding, e5, and g3. Now, here there's a lot of theory. So Magnus Carlsen throws all of that out the window and says, let's play a new Scandinavian defense. d5. Takes, takes, knight f3. And here I should point out, it's a little bit too risky to go for something like e4 because of knight c3. Since you know that's coming, most people in this position actually play bishop b4. Kind of a funny move, but intending to meet this move by capturing. Magnus plays knight c6, knight c3, and queen d8. I mean, the man is inventing opening theory. Pieces are getting developed, h6, this move always prevents bishop g5 in the future. d3, bishop d6, a3, a5, preventing b4. And as of this point, it's brand new. The position is brand new. We don't have any theory here. Castles, bishop b2, centralizing the rook with rook e8, rook c1, and again, more development. Now, what I should say about these positions, these kind of c4, e5 open positions with a d-pawn trade, is that black would like to accomplish something like this to trade off the bishop and potentially play on the queen side, sometimes looking for an e4 break. Play is flexible. Black, white plays h3 to meet this plan with the move king h2. Very common idea, actually. h3 and then king h2. So we get knight d4. And this is a transformation of the position by Magnus. He's basically all fully developed. He can continue to play waiting moves, but instead chooses knight d4, inviting this kind of a trade, which uh, it's just good to know in general what, kind, you know, what trades do for the position. When this happens, the light squared bishop is extremely strong. The rook is strong. Uh, the bishop looks both ways. You know, the knight is hit, but when this knight moves, uh, the rook is going to be open, the bishop's going to be open. So, a very committal move here from Magnus. Ding says, no, thank you. Uh, I'm going to move my knight back. I'm going to open up my bishop this way. And instead of uh, allowing you to, you know, uh, trade the way you want and open your rook, let's keep it closed. So, c6 from Magnus. This actually blunts this bishop's diagonal. e3. So you obviously go back to the center, right? Nope. Knight b5. It seems like Magnus can break all the rules of chess and still get away with it. This trade, doubling his pawns, opening up the diagonal, opening up the rook, and yet the position is completely fine for black. Ding has to go back. Magnus centralizes his rook. Ding goes e4, thinking that Magnus will go back to this diagonal. And Magnus says, I dare you. Take this pawn. I'm blocking my rook. Take this pawn. And Ding says, okay. Magnus says, takes, takes. Well, the knight is strong, but so is that pawn. Queen d6 hits both. Only move here from Ding, f4, and taking on a3. And it was at this point that Ding had to play, well, the, I mean, kind of blindly logical move, rook b1. Uh, and the move rook b1 defends this pawn uh, and just tries to stabilize the position. He also can look for counterplay this way. Instead, Ding played a strange move. He played d4. Uh, I don't know what he missed. You know, he might have just thought that he was trying to get to d5. But after takes queen d3, Magnus is just up a pawn. And d4 is hanging. So Ding plays d5. Magnus plays rook c8, offering a trade of rooks. Top engine move, by the way. Trying to simplify. Not even, not even a4. Rook c8 is the best move, because you prevent rook c7 coming here. Ding plays d6. Now Magnus says, gotcha, rook d8. That's why you should never be afraid of moving a piece to the exact square it just was if the position has changed. It's obviously not good to shuffle endlessly, but this is completely fine because now you have a target. Ding says d7, expecting rook e7 from Magnus. Magnus says, nope, I could just take that. What? What about this move? That knight used to cover that square. So bishop c4, hitting the rook. Now you might say, well, what about just, I don't know, queen d4 here, for example. That's not an actual pin. Don't forget that the pawn is actually guarding the queen. So after this, there's this, this is just hanging. You can play bishop f1, rook d7, and it looks like you're just in time. But this is why you always have to look for checks. Check here, then this rook gets out, black is completely winning. So knight takes d7, bishop c4, ding went back to d1. And here, uh, well, bishop takes f1 is winning uh, for black. Just winning, uh, because then you'll find a way to pick up this knight with this pin. But Magnus finds, again, the top computer move, disregarding the rook entirely. You can pause the video here. And the winning move here is queen e7. And Ding resigned, because he's about to lose this knight 
and Magnus is simply going to be up a trio of pawns, essentially, on the queen side. He's only up two pawns, but feels like he's up three, and he's just going to start rolling them down the board. And with this, Dingley Ren resigned the game, uh, and with it was eliminated. Magnus Carlsen qualifying by virtue of a, of a three-game knockout in their second mini-match. He's in pe peak form. I mean, he's playing fantastic chess, creating openings. Uh, I, should, I should tell you that I found nothing even clearly wrong, by the way, with, with, with this. I, I found nothing clearly wrong. Maybe Magnus knows the answers, but uh, you want a new opening. G3, you got to go D5. Give it a shot. I wonder if we'll be seeing this in top level, t in, in top level events. Um, but yeah, wow. What can I say, huh?